dear students uh, let us discuss another topic that is uh, interference and coincidence uh, these two terminologies you have already come across uh, during the previous lectures while discussing the frequency of crossing over. Interference is basically a phenomenon uh, which inhibit the crossing over uh, at its near point. That means a phenomenon in which one crossing over inhibits the other crossing over at its nearby location. Say for example, this is the homologous pair of the chromosome uh, having two distinct regions, <coughs> regions S C and E C and region E C and C V. If the crossing over between S C and E C region interferes with the crossing over that means, it will not allow 100 percent chance uh, of the crossing over to take place between E C and C V it will lessen the chance of crossing over between E C and C V up to a some extent or at some time it may totally inhibit the uh, chances of crossing over between E C and C V. So, it means it has the interference upon this. So, one crossing over is interfering the chances of crossing over at the other region of the homologous chromosome. So, it means uh, if this thing is happening it means double cross over all are not always independent of one another, they are dependent upon one another which means this crossing over will inhibit the crossing over other or the second crossing over uh, at its nearby location or if this crossing over has taken place uh, first then it will inhibit the chances of crossing over at its nearby location that is between S, S C and E C. So, it means double crossing over are always dependent upon each other. The phenomenon of interference was discovered by Muller in 1911. Uh, let us take an example, uh, there was a cross if you remember when we have discussed the three point cross over, a cross was developed by the C B Bridges and T M Albrecht who intercrossed the F 1 hybrid uh, the wild type females with the skewed bristles echinus size cross winless wings male. And uh, this was basically a type of the test cross over because with respect to the X chromosome this is homozygous recessive and this is heterozygous. So, uh, in the F 1 or the in the F 2 or you can say in the progeny uh, 8 classes of individual were found, 2 of them that is first and second were exactly like that of the parent that is wild type and the secute echinacean cross windless wings. Uh, they were having more number uh, observed number among the total number of progeny that was observed. That means, from the 3248, 1158 individuals were the secute echinus cross mean less and 1455 individuals were wild type. And the rest 6 classes were having the uh, recombinant type of the individuals and uh, among them uh, all of them all these 6 classes were having less number of the individuals and among them the last one that is the class 7 and the class 8 secute and cross winless and the echinus were having only one one individual. Now, uh, so it means it is understood that the class uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 I mean the 6 recombinant classes. The 3, 4, 5, 6 classes have uh, arisen from the a single cross over because the result was that and this result is only possible if the single cross over takes place between S C and E C then this will be the result and E C and C V this will be the result which was observed uh, as I have shown in the previous table. That means, this type of individual were having 192 individual, 
uh, individuals this type of uh, uh, gametic uh, or sorry the genetic makeup was having among the 148 individuals and this was having among 130 and this was having among 163. And the last two which were very less in the number of the individual as far as concerned with respect to the total number of progeny counted, uh, these two uh, types of the individuals which were represented by a single individual only were the result of only double cross hour. So, here again you can predict that because the number of the individuals uh, which uh, have arisen because of the uh, this double cross hour are very less. It means the it is not all the, the double cross hour has a check upon one another. So, that is why very less individual has gone for this type of the crossing hour. So, it means here also that the crossing hour is dependent upon one another. Otherwise, if it was independent then uh, the number of individuals with this type of combination and with this type of combination would have been much more as, as we have observed. Now, uh, let us uh, calculate the crossing over frequency between uh, SCEC and ECCV. Between SC and EC it was, uh, uh, so you know the formula of the uh, number of, uh, to, to determine the crossing over frequency that is the total number of cross over divided by total number of individuals uh, that were produced. So, uh, SC and EC crossing over was uh, taking place between class 3, 4, 7 and 8. So, they were having individual like 163, 130, 1 and 1, when all are added it is 295 and when they were divided by the total number of progeny produced it is 0.091. That means, SC and EC has the 0.091 centimorgan uh, uh, frequency crossing over they are they are 0.091 percent of the uh, uh, crossing over between these two. Now, similarly the crossing over between E C and C V was represented by class 5, 6 and 7 and 8 and again the individual were uh, like that 192, 148, 11 respectively which were added and it was 342 and when it was divided by total number of the individual uh, of the uh, of the progeny. So, it was point 105. So, it means the frequency of crossing over between E C and C V was uh, 0.105. Now, if you take that uh, if one crossing over is not interfering at all with the other crossing over it means let us consider that both the crossing over are independent. Then you can calculate the expected crossing over frequency between S C and C V which will be the crossing over frequency between S C and E C that is 0.091 and crossing over frequency between E C and C V that is 0.105 will be multiplied and the result will be the frequency of crossing over between S C and C V and it comes to 0.00095. Now, uh, when actually the frequency of crossing over between uh, uh, S C and C V which was uh, shown over by the only class 7 and class 8 with the only one uh, individual each uh, was actually observed. So, because SC, EC, CV uh, the two type of individual were found only in the progeny which were having the crossing over which was result of the double cross over. So, they were two when they were divided by the total number of individual it is 0 0.006. Now, when you compare the uh, expected one, so expected one was 0.00095 and whereas observed was 0.006. So, it is far less as uh, from the uh, expected one. It means that expected one was calculated while taking into consideration that one cross hour is independent of one uh, other cross hour. Whereas, the result has shown us that it is not uh, independent, it is dependent because the number of the cross hour is uh, uh, frequency of the crossing over between SC and CV as observed is very much less as compared to the expected one. So, it means you can say that the double cross hour are not uh, independent of one another, they are the dependent, they are dependent upon one another and otherwise you are or in other words you can say that the crossing over, one crossing over always interferes 
with the crossing over it inhibits the chances of crossing over to takes place at its nearby location. The strength of interference uh, is a function of map distance. So, uh, obviously, if the distance is less, it means the, inter the interference will be more and if the distance is uh, more, then the interference will be weak. Because we have already used a word nearby that the one crossing over interferes or inhibits the chances of crossing over at its nearby location. So, it was observed by the geneticists that uh, basically if the distance between the two gene is a 20 centimorgan apart, then uh, the, there will be a strong uh, you can say interference. That means, there will be a no chance that in such a short distance the crossing over will take place. However, if the distance is very long, then the interference will be very weak and the chances of crossing over second crossing over will be more. Uh, though the interference varies from chromosome to chromosome. That means, if one pair of chromosome is showing uh, uh, say for example, 30 percent crossing over between any two pore genes, then the other homologous pair may not show uh, the same percent of crossing over between the two genes even if they are located at the same distance. And even the crossing over also or the interference also varies from one point of point time to another. That means, if the same pair of homologous chromosome is showing say for example, here we have seen that it was point uh, I think it was point uh, yes it was point 0.091 between SC and EC that, all, that does not mean every time it will show the same type of frequency between these two at the other time it may show the less. Uh, percentage of uh, crossing over or the less uh, yes le less percentage of crossing over or the more percentage of crossing over than that. It means at the same point even the crossing over uh, varies uh, from uh, point from one point to other. So, once the crossing over varies it means the interference also varies from one point to other. In general it is maximum near the centromere and at the two end of the chromosome that means high interference will be found at the centromere and the telomere as we have already discussed during the frequency of the crossing over that crossing over hardly takes place between the telomere and between the centromere regions. So, it means the interference at these two points is very high. Uh, the extent of interference is customarily measured by the coincidence or coefficient of coincidence. So, coincidence or coefficient of coincidence is represented by the letter c and uh, basically this is the ratio of observed frequency of the double crossover to the expected frequency. That means, c is equal to observed frequency of double crossover and the expected frequency of crossover as in the example we have taken it was 0 0.0006 that was observed whereas, 0 0.0095 was actually uh, Mm, frequency was expected. So, it was it was equal to 0 0.063. So, this is basically the 0 0.063 is the is you can say that it is the coincidence or the coefficient of the coincidence. Uh, the level of the interference that how much uh, one crossing over interferes with the other is symbolized by the letter L and is calculated by the formula 1 minus C. So, in the in this case it is 1 minus 0 1 minus 0 0.063 this is equal to 0 0.937. Now, let us look at what this value means. So, basically you have to remember that if the coefficient of coincidence is equal to 0, then it means there is a interference 100 percent interference that is interference is complete. That means, no double cross over will take place over there. In other words, you can say there is a altogether absence of the double crossover. So, it means 100 percent interference. So, once the coefficient coincidence value is equal to 0, you are having the 100 percent uh, interference. That is interference is inversely proportional to the percentage of crossing over. So, if the crossing over will be more, then interference will be less. Between uh, 0 if the value of the coefficient of coincidence is between 0 and 1, it will indicate 
the partial interference. So, in the previ previous case you can see that the value is between uh, 0 and 1 that is 0.937. So, it means uh, it is not the 100 percent uh, interference, it is uh, a partial interference, it will it, it is allowing some uh, up to some extent the uh, crossing over to takes place and thus the interference uh, is not complete over there. And if the value is equal to 1, then there is no interference at all. That means there are always chances that the second crossing over will take place and it will happen you know al always when the distance will be more and you can say that it is 100 percent uh, uh, cross over at this point of time or you can say that it is 100 percent uh, uh, this uh, interference. Uh, so, this is all about the uh, you can say the interference and the coefficient of the uh, coincidence uh, which are very useful term uh, as far as while discussing the crossing over and the chiasmata formation at a two point of junction is concerned.